I'm Maria Rieger and welcome to another episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I'm your resident Gemini. Uh, before we begin, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for your free, regular Positive Parenting with Astrology content. Happy New Year 2024, everyone. This is the first uh, published video of the new year 2024. Very excited about this. A couple of admin announcements. If you have a request for a particular video, something you want to know about, a particular zodiac sign combination you want to learn more about, please email me or post your request below in the comments. This video is on how to parent your Sagittarius child when you're a Cancer mom or a Cancer dad. This video is at the request of one of the listeners. So um, again, if you have a request, just list it in the comments below. Also, I am currently booking a speaking engagements and readings for the first few months of this year. I do have some availability left. So if you're interested in having me speak at an event or do a group reading, you could reach out. Again, my email is in the video description or leave a comment below and I will get back to you. Okay, so this sign combination, Sagittarius, child, cancer, parent, is very interesting and interestingly, it works on many levels. There are a lot of things that these energies can teach each other, okay? So as always, I'm going to give a high level overview of Sagittarius energy, then Cancer energy, then I'm gonna talk about the dynamic between these two energies and how they can help each other. So as we know, Sagittarius is mutable fire. Fire energy means it's a masculine energy, right? It is a doing energy. The key term here is physical activity, especially for the Sagittarian boys. This is a restless energy. Fire energy is always restless, especially if it's mutable or cardinal, um, Sag or Aries, which is cardinal. It's a restless energy. It is kind of a wild, untamed energy. In its purest sense, it is a wild, untamed energy. Remember, the symbol for Sagittarius is a centaur. It is half human, half beast, okay? That's where the untamed wild nature comes from. You'll see that untamed wild nature more often in boys because it is generally, not saying it's right, but it's generally more acceptable for boys to display physical restlessness than it is for girls. Sagittarian girls sometimes have a hard time uh, with that quality and, that, and having that quality accepted by people around them. Now, if you have a Sagittarius sun or a Sagittarius moon child um, and you have a very different energy displayed in the rest of the chart. You may have a lot of air energy or water energy. That restless, untamed nature sometimes is tempered a little bit. But Sagittarian energy at its purest is this wild, untamed energy, right? This let me roam wild and free type of thing. And very often that is manifested in physical restlessness, okay? This is also a very social energy. You can have Sagittarian sun or moon people who test as introverts. That can happen, right? But generally it is an energy that is compelled to be social. By the way, being an introvert does not mean you don't like to communicate and you don't like to be social. It just means that you need to recharge your energy with some periods of alone time. It's more complicated than that, but that in a nutshell is introversion, right? So, but Sagittarius energy is a social energy Sagittarian people typically have an entourage about them. Sagittarian children tend to have a lot of friends, acquaintances, and social contacts. Now, since SAG is a mutable modality sign, that means it can waffle between the cardinal and fixed modalities. It is very common to see both of these modalities play out in the SAG child. Both the, on the cardinal end, their restlessness, this inability to sit still, this wanting to move forward and tend on progressive progressive forward movement, forward momentum, right? And the other extreme is kind of, we'll talk about uh, the nature of Jupiter, the ruler of Sagittarius in a bit, but the other extreme of that is kind of a fixed quality. Some people would call it a laziness or being lackadaisical, more of a static quality. So you'll, it's very common to see the breadth of, of that displayed in the Sagittarian child's nature, right? So Sagittarius is ruled by the planet Jupiter. Jupiter is what we call, most astrologers refer to as a benefic planet. It's a planet that um, generally thought of as, the energy of Jupiter is generally thought of very positively, right? 
So on the one hand, Jupiter is a planet that represents great abundance, great uh, higher consciousness, higher learning, kind of the development of personal consciousness, personal self-awareness, things like that. So all good things. On the other hand, on the flip side of that, Jupiter, uh, Jupiter's influence can also lead the chart holder to engage in excess, that too much, right? Too much of a good thing can even trend toward laziness. But the key here, the, the key here when talking about the negative aspect of Jupiter is the excess. That could be excess of, you know, spending, compulsive spending, compulsive eating, hoarding objects, right? So that can also play out as well. So Jupiter rules Sag and Sag is associated with the ninth house, which is the house of higher consciousness and higher learning. And many astrologers refer to Sagittarius as the philosopher of the Zodiac. SAG people are generally interested in big picture, right? The big picture as opposed to minute details getting lost in minute details. You will always have an interesting conversation with your SAG child. They have varied interests. They are always motivated to learn and they like to talk through things that have interesting conversations. And the last kind of big thing I wanna talk about before we move on to cancer is that SAG people tend to take life a little more lightly than other heavier energies, right? It's the it's exemplified by the live life to the fullest or you can sleep when you're dead, things like that. So SAG kids, young adults, very much exhibit that quality, which is great because you wanna go out you, and experience life and you wanna encourage your kids to experience life. So they're, it's generally a very optimistic, positive, forward-looking energy. Okay, now we're gonna to move to an overview of cancer energy. Cancer is a very interesting sign. It's cardinal water. You know, when you think of water, you think of you know, Scorpio as fixed water and Scorpio people, as we've talked about multiple times on this, on this channel, tend to dwell in their emotions. Cancer people do too, but a little less because of the cardinal modality of the, of the sign. So cardinal means it's intent on uh, forward momentum, moving forward, things like that. Nevertheless, it is a water sign. So cancer people do tend to be moody. They tend to brood on things, which we'll talk about. But before we get into it too much, since in this dynamic, we're talking about the cancer as the parent, the cancer person as the parent, I always say, right, that the responsibility for the parent-child relationship rests with the parent. Because the children, they just don't have the sophistication and the brain development yet, right? to realize what's going on in the relationship, to realize the dynamics and to correct any dynamics that are negative. That onus is always on the parent. That responsibility lays with the parent. So in these videos, I'm always talking about what the parent, right, can do to improve the relationship with the child. And remember, nobody gives us a blueprint for relationships. Our parents generally do a very poor job. It's not their fault, but they generally do a very poor job of teaching us, right, as we were kids and teenagers and young adults, how to behave in relationships and how to make a relationship work and how to look out for the relationship that works for us, right? So, you know, and I'm not blaming our parents for that. They were not given these tools either, but it's amazing to me how we want our kids to learn all these things, but nobody, nobody teaches us so that we can teach our kids about how to behave in relationships and how to be a good partner to someone, right? So that's what drives a lot of what I talk about on this channel because it was trial and error for me, uh, learning to be a parent and also learning to be a partner. And I, I don't want people to struggle. So cancer is known to be a very psychic, intuitive sign. Cancer parents, they are really, really good at ferreting things out, figuring things out and they know things without even realizing how they know things. They're able to intuit things about their kids. They have this very strong mental connection with the kids. The kids, a lot of the time, will not even understand how the parents, especially the moms, know. They just know stuff. Now, cancer is ruled by the moon, which rules our emotional life. Okay, so when you have your son in the sign of cancer, you're going to be approaching the world and approaching life and big decisions in life from a standpoint of intuition, feeling, emotions. You're going to make decisions largely based on how you feel about things and what you intuit about things. What you intuit is the right thing to do, right? You make decisions based on 
your intuition about what the right thing is to do. Not so much on weighing pros and cons and weighing all this data. What do you intuit to be the right thing to do? What do you intuit to be the right decision? Okay. Cancer energy is also a natural nurturer. Other people, I'll use myself as an example, uh, Gemini Sun, you know, I, in many ways, I, I was a natural nurturer to my kid. In some ways, I had to learn to do that, right? I had to learn to be nurturing before trying to solve problems, before trying to understand something, before weighing data and pros and cons. To cancer parents, the nurturing is an ingrained, inherent part of their energy. And I'm going to give you a very powerful example of this. Princess Diana, God rest her. I remember when she passed away, I was in college. Uh, Princess Diana was a cancer son. Okay. She was, uh, most of us can agree, a very good mom. She was a nurturing mom. She formed really close relationships with her two boys. She did not have a good parent-child relationship model. She had a, a really troubled childhood. Her mother basically abandoned the family. She did not see her mother very much. And so she was raised largely by the father and the father was very emotionally cold. And Diana did not have a great or close relationship with her older sister. So she was left alone, emotionally alone, much of the time. She was not nurtured in the way a kid needs to be nurtured. But she instinctively knew, despite that poor relationship model, she instinctively knew how to nurture her kids. So when William was born, she was really young. They, she and Prince Charles took their first big state visit, right? Like international trip to represent the crown. And she insisted on taking a baby William with them to Africa. And people said to her, he's going to get in the way, leave him at home and have the nannies look after him. And she instinctively knew the baby needs to be with the mom. The baby has to be with me. She knew that. And she said, the baby comes on the trip with us or I'm not going on the trip. And if you watch the show, The Crown, which I love, and admittedly, The Crown is not, you know, not necessarily historically accurate. So I do not know if this conversation took place, actually took place, but I'll mention it here uh, just as an illustration. In The Crown, it, when that happened, Diana insisting on taking baby William with him on the state trip. And they, somebody, somebody in the entourage said to Queen Elizabeth said, well, Diana wants to make sure that the trip is a success and goes well. And Queen Elizabeth says, well, Philip and I left the kids for five months and the trip went fine. The trip was fine and I was fine. And I'm thinking, no, Diana wants to make sure everything is well with her kid, not on the trip. That's the point of bringing the kid, not for the benefit of the trip, for the benefit of the baby. My point here is, Diana naturally knew how to be a nurturing mom. And she naturally instinctively knew the baby needs to be with mom when they're this young, right? So that's why she's a really good example of cancer energy. You, you just know that you just know what to do to, to love this baby and make the baby feel loved, right? So it's a wonderful energy for, for the parent to have. And I love cancer dads. They are especially sensitive and really intuitively and emotionally in touch with the feelings of the kids. I even know cancer son men who do not have kids and they're just naturally taking care of everyone around them. They're just natural caregivers. So that's the energy. So to cancer people, life is about deep meaning and they need, when they connect with someone, they need to connect on an emotional level, on a deep level of consciousness, right? This bodes well for the cancer Sag dynamic because Sagittarius people wear their emotions on their sleeves, okay? So it makes it easier because the cancer parent knows what the kid's feeling and going through. It makes it a little bit easier to, you know, connect with them on the emotional level. They're not, they don't have to spend too much time usually getting to the bottom of what's going on with the SAG chi child because they, they're very outwardly expressive with their emotions. So the cancer parent connects easily through emotions. SAG is good about outwardly expressing emotions and the cancer parent in turn can validate the emotions. So that dynamic can work really well. So in that way, the SAG child feels emotionally safe to outwardly express the emotions to the cancer parent. So now we're gonna get into the dynamic between these two energies. So the first big recommendation I have for the cancer parent is to make sure you are showing consistent emotions to your SAG child, that you are being emotionally consistent. 
Cancer, as we said, cancer is usually very good at identifying and validating emotions of the children because cancer is an emotional sign. Cancer naturally understands the emotional experience. To a cancer person, life is about experiencing emotions and connecting with others, right, one-on-one, -on, -one, on an emotional level. But on the other hand, cancer is a very moody energy. Cancer energy can, the cancer person can change, you know, their energy can change and shift very often. Um, it can take a right turn sometimes. So the, their moods can change pretty quickly. To a child, any child, that can be a little confusing, especially to a SAG child who is very outwardly expressive with emotions, whereas their emotions on their sleeves, that can be confusing because they may, the child may be left trying to figure out what the parent is feeling and how can I get the parent to feel better. And you do not want to, to be communicating to your child that they are responsible for your emotional experience, that they are responsible for making you feel better or for putting you in a better mood. That risks parentifying the child, putting the child in the uh, parental role. It's not emotionally healthy for the child. So you want to make sure that you are being emotionally consistent with your SAG child. Now, it's okay to have and express negative emotions. And you want to be honest about that, okay? You want to be honest and say things like, look, I'm having a bad day today, but it doesn't have anything to do with you. Or at work, you know, something happened. Again, it has nothing to do with you. I'm in a little bit of a funk right now or a bad mood. Again, not to do with you. It's just to do with this. Or, you know, the lunar cycle sometimes put me in a bad mood. Again, nothing to do with you. Sometimes I just feel in a bad mood. I don't know. So you can be honest about that and, you know, you can express emotions honestly with your SAG child in a way that does not communicate to them that they are responsible for your emotions. Now, the second big recommendation I have for the cancer parent is to be consistent with communication and communicate in a direct manner. In addition to being moody, cancer energy also tends to be passive aggressive, okay? Remember, the symbol for cancer is the crab. When cancer people feel emotionally hurt, they will um, retreat into their shell and hide, okay? When Scorpio people feel emotionally hurt, they'll sting the other person. When cancer feels emotionally hurt, they will hide and into their withdraw into their shell. So cancer, the cancer person can be very sensitive about what they're going through emotionally, especially if they were encouraged to repress their emotions as children, because sometimes when cancer children Sometimes cancer children had the experience that when they showed those big emotions, when they were emotional about something, when they showed a sensitivity, right? The, sometimes the parents didn't like that because maybe the parents were emotionally triggered by their own childhood conditioning or they didn't want to deal with it or they found the child's moodiness to be too much for their own energy. And we either directly or indirectly, the parent may have communicated to the cancer child not to show those emotions. And um, that can lead to passive aggressive displays of emotions, right? I, I'm not gonna communicate directly, but I'll communicate indirectly. So here's a big, this, this has the potential to be a big dilemma for this sign combination because cancer tends sometimes to be passive aggressive. Again, especially if that was modeled for them as children, Sad, SAG energy is very blunt. Sometimes blunt to the point of being offensive. <laughs> And if you know any Sagittarian people, you will know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? You have to have thick skin to be uh, close to a Sagittarian person with that level of bluntness. So SAG is very direct and very blunt. It's the nature of fire energy. Nothing wrong with that, it's the nature of it, okay? So you can see the potential for conflict here. SAG communicates directly, bluntly, right? And cancer energy is very sensitive. So the SAG may be, in their mind, being just honest but the cancer person is very, gets very defensive and gets very sensitive about um, the SAG's direct blunt communication. Okay, so here the cancer person is the parent. So the cancer person has a responsibility for managing this dynamic. All right, so you can still communicate directly without being offensive or overly blunt, okay? So that's my big recommendation, is to let go of the passive aggressiveness if that is what you're doing and communicate directly. Make sure you're communicating directly. SAG people, SAG kids need direct communication. They do not always understand the kind of obtuse, passive aggressive nature um, in which some people communicate. They need direct communication. 
So that's my, my other big recommendation for you, the cancer parent, is to make sure when you're communicating, you can be sensitive, that's fine, but make sure you're communicating directly and you're stating things clearly. Also, cancer has a penchant for the silent treatment. Again, when they retreat into their shell, they tend to shut down and be silent. And I've described this dynamic before uh, with other sign combinations, especially when fire energy is involved. The fire energy person tends to be very passionate. So when they're communicating about something that's important to them, they may raise their voice and they, in their mind, they're showing their passion about this subject, that this subject matters to them and that this relationship matters to them. And in this case, the cancer person, cancer is an introverted energy. Doesn't mean that all cancer people test as introverts, but it is more of an introverted energy. Um, and when they feel hurt, they tend to withdraw and shut down. So the cancer person in this dynamic will be faced with this big display from the Sagittarian person and they'll feel almost attacked and they'll feel very sensitive and they'll shut down and get quiet. And to them, to the cancer person, that's self-preservation. But to the Sagittarius person, it looks like the cancer person does not care about them, what they're talking about, or the relationship. Now, obviously that's not true. The cancer person does care, but that that may not be what the SAG person is understanding. And if the SAG is a child, as in the dynamic we're talking about here, they do not have the level of sophistication yet to understand that. To understand that, hey, this feels that way to me, but maybe that's not the truth of this matter. It's just how I feel. They don't have the sophistication to get that yet. Especially if they're SAG, you know, fire energy is not great at being detached. It's more of an ego-oriented energy. It is more challenging for a fire sun person to step outside of themselves and put themselves in the shoes of the other person. It's not impossible. It's just more challenging. So that's a, that's a dynamic that, you know, can cause some problems if the parent is not managing it correctly. My point here is to say that to a SAG child, the silent treatment feels like torture. Now it's okay to take time for yourself, right? I'm not saying you, you cannot withdraw or retreat and um, just take a few minutes for yourself. You can tell your kid, look, I just need a few minutes alone and we'll come back to this. Or I wanna talk about this, but right now I need to rest for a few minutes. That's very different than just shutting down and ignoring them completely and not communicating at all. So if that is you, if you are a cancer parent that tends to withdraw, shut down and not communicate and give the silent treatment, that is something you will have to work on, okay? That, that dynamic is really toxic to a sag, any child, but mostly a sad, but very much so a Sagittarius child because they hate that silent treatment. They want, to connect with the parent. They are driven to connect with the parent. That means talking with the parent, communicating with the parent, okay? So that's something to be aware of. I do wanna point out too that uh, we're talking about the kind of the very blunt nature of Sagittarius energy. Now, in lead to, as SAG kids get older into adolescent teen years, some conflicts or drama in relationships and friendships, right? Because of the bluntness. SAG children eventually learn that from natural consequences. They learn that, oh, if I am this blunt or this direct, this person is not going to like it. They're going to feel offended or they're going to feel this. And this is one of the areas where the cancer parent can really help uh, the SAG child develop their emotional intelligence. Cancer is a very emotionally intelligent energy, right? You can talk to your SAG, your SAG child about communicating in relationships and how to communicate so you can have an effective conversation. It's not about uh, repressing your own energy, but it is about communicating in a way the other person can hear, right? Communicating your needs so the other person will be open and receptive and listen to you. So this is an area where cancer can really help the SAG child identify and articulate emotions and, and also help the SAG child to understand the other person's point of view because adolescents and teens are not great at that because they're, that's just how their brains are wired. Their brains are wired to be more, more ego-oriented at that age. But you, the parent, can help your SAG child develop that emotional intelligence. And again, as we say often on this channel, one of the best ways to do that is to show empathy for the child. Instead of saying things like, oh, you're so sensitive, or you're too much, or your energy is too much, say things like, I think what I'm hearing from you is that you feel X. Is that right? Or I think what I'm hearing is that you felt that you were not given consideration in this decision or you are sad because your friend said this or this happened, is that right? And by going through that and having those conversations, you will be helping your Sagittarius child
to correctly identify and articulate their emotional experiences. And that is especially helpful because SAG energy does tend to get emotionally overwhelmed sometimes. That is just the nature of fire. Fire energy has the tendency to burn uncontrollably if it is not contained. I don't like to use controlled when we're talking about kids, the term controlled, but if it is not contained. So fire energy has to be contained or tempered somehow. And that doesn't mean you have to deny the nature of the energy. You want kids to live authentically. However, if the fire energy is left to burn uncontrollably, it's not positive either. Now, it is easy for cancer parents to become burned out. Cancer is a very empathic energy. It's, it's easy for them to take on the emotional experience of the other person, especially when it's their kids. So if you are the cancer parent, I strongly encourage you to take time for yourself right? I always say on this channel, do less to do more, get rid of those responsibilities and areas and other things of your life that you do not need that no longer serve you and make room for what is really important, especially your self care. Because if you're stressed or anxious or living on edge all the time, you cannot be present for your kids. You cannot be emotionally present for them and you cannot help them. And remember to observe rather than absorb your child's emotions. Now, this is easier said than done. I know I've had this uh, challenge to face as well, but you can experience and observe your child's emotions without taking on the energy, right? You can observe it and help them, you know, help talk them through it and help them work things out for themselves and without taking it personally. And you can tell yourself that this is not something to do with you and you also do not have control over the emotional experience of someone else, right? You can always, you cannot always make somebody feel better or make somebody feel happy when they're sad. That's, that's something that I had to learn to work through for myself, especially like when I would drop my kid off somewhere like at school or his dad's house and he would be upset either with me or, or for some other reason or just you're in an irritable mood. I didn't like that. I lamented that because here I am dropping him off and now I'm not going to see him for a few hours or a few days. And I don't like leaving things like that. However, I do not have control over the emotions he is feeling or the emotions he is experiencing. I don't have control if he's in a bad mood. I only have control over my side of it. I have control over the words I use, the emotions that I articulate, the emotions I show on my face how I interact with him from my side. That's what I have control over. So I had to keep telling myself that. And I'm telling you that now you have control over your behavior, but you don't have control over your kids. So, um, you know, parents, especially moms, a lot of us have the natural inclination to, if our kid is upset about something to make it right, to fix it or to, to do something or give them something. So they're in a better mood, but, it's not number one, we really can't, we can't, it's not like flipping a switch, right? You can't just flip a switch and make them happy again. Also, we don't want to be communicating to them that we're responsible for how they feel. And I know that may be a controversial thing to say as a parent, but at the end of the day, especially as kids get older, we're not responsible for making them happy because we don't want to be communicating to them that they cannot be happy without extrinsic things, external things happening, that that's not what makes you happy at the end of the day, like getting things or having things happen or being in a relationship or having something good happen, right? Or somebody saying hello to you. That's not what makes us really happy at the end of the day. Happiness comes from inside, from inside us. It's an internal intrinsic thing. So if we're relying on external things for our own happiness, we are always going to be disappointed, right? So um, that was a hard lesson for me to learn, but it's an important one that we are not really responsible for making our kids happy at the end of the day, that we want to treat them right and make sure we have a strong relationship where they feel emotionally safe and comfortable talking to us about anything, but we really cannot control their moods and their emotional experiences. So to that end, it is okay if your SAG child is disappointed or in a bad mood once in a while. It is not your fault if they're in a bad mood or showing a negative emotion. That does not mean you are a deficient parent, not at all. It is our job to help them cope with those feelings, to learn coping mechanisms for bringing themselves out of the bad mood on their own, right? That's our job. Now, I will be remiss if I did not mention boundaries when I mentioned this relationship dynamic. Because water signs, as we've talked about in other uh, videos on Cancer and Scorpio energy and Pisces energy, 
water signs um, always have risk the propensity to blur boundaries because water spreads and tends to blur the boundaries between the water sign person and the other person. So this is always a challenge for water sign parents, right? Because when our kids are little, it's almost like we think of them as extensions of ourselves, right? And that starting at around age seven, they really start to individuate and become their own person, their own being. They've all, they always were their own being. I don't want to suggest otherwise. But that becomes really important developmentally around age seven. And then as adolescents or te and teens, they show this uh, contrarian attitude to the parents. And that is completely developmentally normal because they are establishing their own identities as separate from the parents. And often that involves being counter to what the parents like or the parents' nature, right? Because they are experimenting with establishing their own identities. So if you are a cancer parent that needs to work on strengthening their own boundaries and respecting your um, your child's boundaries, that's something for you to work on. It's okay. Many of us, most of us, myself included, have had to work on that, okay? So one of the ways to teach your kids healthy boundaries is to have healthy boundaries yourself, which is not about control. Having boundaries, healthy boundaries, is not about controlling people in situations. It's about, you know, maintaining your own individual boundaries between you and the other person. And it's not about controlling the other person. It's about self-respect and self-autonomy. Now, I want to close this video by talking about ways to bond, uh, ways for the cancer parent to bond with your Sagittarius child. So, cancer is a very affectionate energy. It's an energy that likes physical touch. Fire signs in general love physical touch. In fact, many if not most fire sign fire sun sign people have physical touch as one of their main love languages so when kids are little obviously they need a lot of physical contact and cancer parents are generally really good at providing that being really physically affectionate as kids get older they need less physical contact with the parents so but there still are other ways to bond with your sagittarius child one is physical activity do physical activity together as we said earlier in this video uh, SAG needs physical activity as an outlet for that restless, untamed energy. So when you do physical activities together, uh, either competitive or non-competitive, it's a great way to bond. I will say boys especially bond through competition. So even cancer moms, if you can do a competitive physical activity with your SAG son, that will go a long way toward strengthening that connection and building those bridges because that's a great way for boys to bond. Now, as kids get older, the SAG people, as we said earlier, love to have interesting intellectual conversations. That's another great way you can bond is having these interesting conversations, is asking them questions, maybe learning a new skill together, maybe doing a physical activity where you're learning a new skill together. All those ways are great for bonding with your Sagittarius child. I want to close out by saying if you are a cancer parent or a Sagittarius parent who's working on reparenting yourself from negative conditioning and childhood trauma, you can check out my other videos on cancer and SAG kids and parents. I will leave the links below. Thank you for your attention and we'll be back soon.